What's up guys, welcome to Knife Banter. Today we're talking about American made knives. Let's talk knives. How's it going guys and welcome to Knife Banner. Today we are talking some of our favorite American made knives and we finally got the man himself, Kurt. Dude, so stoked that we we were able to figure this out and get it going again. Thanks, man. Good to be it's, on. It's been a minute. It really has. Honestly, it's been a minute. <laughs> I've I've just been laying low in the shelters, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just Cre doing creating my all those cre Creating all those beautiful images we have on Instagram. That's right. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do. So, Love it. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so like I said, we're talking some of our favorite American-made knives, companies, etc. And I'm kicking it off with Hogue Knives. So um, Hogue Knives, so, you know, knives, they make just an awesome knife uh, like this EXA01. Um, Hogue Knives is a company based out of California, 100% uh, made in the USA. They uh, are a manufacturer that's manufactured gun grips for like I don't know, like 30 years or something for a long, 40, 50, I don't know, 50, I think 50 years, long time. And uh, they've been in the knife game for a while and they have been making some incredible knives for quite a t quite some time. So all made in the USA, lifetime warranty, great action. Uh, their knives come in autos and in manuals. On the table, I have an auto and I have a manual. So uh, this EXA01 is a great example of some of the earlier work that they did. Uh, this goes for 229.46 on the website, and you know it's got a two-way reversible pocket clip. It's got a, a nice lock on it, and just a, you know it comes in a bunch of different colors and a few different blade profiles as well. Um, along with Hogue. We also have the Hogue Deca. Now this is kind of more on the new new of what these guys have been up to. Really nice slim profile knife. Um, mm. You've got what I believe they call the Able Lock. As you guys know, uh, the patent on this uh, type of lock is up. So Benchmade still retains the name Access Lock, but now we get it on a bunch of other awesome knives from a bunch of other awesome companies like Hogue. And uh, so this is the Able Lock. Works exactly like you would expect it to. You just pull that bar back, opens and closes the knife. Um, but yeah, the Hogue Deca. I believe this thing goes for right in the 150, 140 price range. So 20 CV blade, G10 handle, uh, two-way reversible pocket clip, and uh, basically really slim carry, really lightweight knife uh, with a 20 CV blade. Very, very affordable knife. Well, I've got some tops over on my side. Heck yeah, Can let's we, do it. Let, let's check them out. So the first one up is the Tops Bob. Hey there, Bob. Ready to party? The Topps Bob is a bushcraft knife. Uh, you're looking at like a, just over a four and a half inch blade. Um, what else? This thing is a beast. It really is. I don't know if you can see the blade stock on there. Maybe yeah, you man. Can. It's it's but, such a burly knife. And you know, Bob, brothers of bushcraft, right? Right, right. And these things are sweet. Honestly, it's, it's a way more ergonomically nice in my hand compared to some of the other bushcraft knives that I've that I've played with in the past. Um, the nice thing is you've got dual side, you've got a drill out in your micarta scales for a bow drill. So you mm -hmm. can do that. This one also has a Kydex sheath with a fire starter clip and a whistle. The Bob is an awesome knife. Uh, 1095 steel, this thing, honestly, it's a tank. I really feel like this is one of those knives that you could just put to work and nothing's going to happen to it. And for 130 bucks on the website. I actually just noticed one more thing real quick. Um, sorry, I kind of smashed my finger with a hammer. I was just about to ask you about your finger. <laughs> but, but this is interesting. Notice right here on the opposite side. It's mm -hmm. cut out so you can use your fire starter like that and not have to use yep. the back of your blade. Really cool, really cool detail. Okay, what else do I have from Tops? I got a mini Scandi. This is a mini Scandi. I have actually been waiting to get, cause we have them over in our other warehouse in Virginia, but mm -hmm. we hardly get them here in Utah. And so I'm always like, I want that Scandi. I want that mini Scandi. But this is a great knife, guys. Um, 
you can't really go wrong. It's 65 bucks, 1095 steel. This is how it fits in the hams, the hams itself. It's actually a really nice three finger knife and very comfortable actually to hold. I think I might have to pick me up one of these. I've been looking for a good three inch fixed blade, so. And that's why I, I was wondering, right? Cause with your bigger hand, it's like, it's like, right. wow, you want the mini Scandi, but that's the one that calls to you, huh? Well, and honestly, it's only because I've got a really good index finger choil and my other fingers just grip nice. I guess the, the chub of the ham sharks embracing <laughs> itself over the micarta it's just, it's as tight as like a good hug, like a big yeah. bro hug. You know what I mean? Nice. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now, with I got to ask, man, because I just saw your finger when you were talking about that Bob, uh, the Bob uh, Bushcrafter. What's this? What did you do to your finger? Did you cut, you hit it with a hammer? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I've worked construction throughout my life before this. Yeah. But it's, I'll be honest, it's been a minute since I picked up a hammer. So I was hanging, I was hanging up my American flag and I needed an extra spacer for the two by four because it was in the wrong spot. Yeah. Just holding it up, just one nail, tap, tap. And then right as I was getting heavy on it, like I start to get heavy. I'm like, I should, in my subconscious, I was like, I should pull my finger away. And I went, bam, that time did it. Oh. It, it like exploded, it oh. like exploded this part of my finger up into my fingernail, so it's all smashed, but it's gross, so. Well, I'm I glad you got it wrapped up. I had up. to wrap it, yeah, I had to wrap it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you know, and uh, going back to Tops, uh, the one thing that I love about Tops, right, is they're they're basically our neighbors, right? They're just up there oh, in yeah. Idaho, yep. and they make everything there in Idaho, Right. And they just make an incredible knife. I mean, whether you go with something like that mini Scandi or something like that um, Bob or something like the, uh, I just picked up that um, tracker, right? The Topps tracker right. that I'm right. super stoked on. I actually had it on the table, but I, like I've shown it off enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, w whatever you're picking up, like they have such a quality product, tons of micarta right. options, which I love. And then that 1095 is just a uh, tried and true Oh you yeah, know, outdoor bushcraft steel. Oh heck yeah! That I mean, that's the thing is you for bushcrafting. You want a knife that's bulletproof, right? Mm. You want a knife that you can just beat on, and it'll still perform. I mean, a lot of people use these for actual survival instead of just I have a cool knife that I carry around every once in a while. And so for them, it's like a life or death tool sometimes, you know. And so to have something that will always be consistent and constantly be there to be able to take any kind of punishment you give it, that's tops. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, speaking of punishment, <laughs> I have, I've got uh, some Leathermans on the table. So this nice. is actually my personal Leatherman surge. Uh, I had to bring this because if you're gonna show off Leatherman, I just feel like you have to show one that's like got some love on it, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because well, that's what Leatherman is all about. <laughs> and you, you more than anybody in the circle around in work, I mean, you've had probably the most time on a Leatherman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've carried a Leatherman, I mean, since I was a kid. And then this particular surge has been with me, I mean, dude, like 10, 12, 4, I don't even know, for like a long, long, long time. It um, would be, this was in my carpenter it, bags for a long time. It would be interesting to have a time meter that almost like a like an hour meter on like a motorcycle or something, like yeah. to tell you how much time it's spent in your hand. That would actually That'd be, be really awesome. cool. That'd be really awesome. <laughs> but you know, when we talk Leatherman, uh, and you know, the Surge is a great example of this, like super tough tools, built to get the job done. And again, kind of another bootstrap American made story. So, you know, Leatherman, they're oh, based yeah. out of the Portland area. And forever, Tim Leatherman, he had this idea, uh, was the, I believe the Crunch was the, the name of the first model they made. And he had this idea and he, he has all the rejection letters. Like he pitched that to every <laughs> single company under the sun and everybody's like, nobody wants that. <laughs> and so he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it myself then. And that's exactly what he did. And dude, it paid off. Like and that, every... first, that first one and then now all these other amazing ones. Everyone's like, dang it. We should have jumped on that. 
Oh, I'm sure, right? Like, I'm sure they're now kicking themselves, right? Like, right. and then a bunch of other companies eventually jumped on that multi-tool game because they're like, oh, wait, Leatherman, that's a real oh, thing. You know? This is a thing, <laughs> and we we missed this, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, again, just... Go ahead. They're, they're great, honestly. Um, I always have one in my truck, and it's I don't use it every day by any means, but I use it once or twice a week, every other week, I don't know. Like there's always something, I could be strapping something down in the back of my truck and I'm like, crap. A lot of times I'll tie knots and rope to my truck and then I like can't get them down because I've stitched them <laughs> too hard. So I use the pliers to like work the rope loose. Right. <laughs> So, dude, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to when when uh, when we can be close together. We're gonna have to get together. I'll teach you the truck or not. <laughs> yes, I want to know. I want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, and then you know, you have something like the surge, and there's a lot of things I love about the surge. Mainly, just that it's bulletproof. I mean, I've used this thing as like a hammer, and it didn't care, right? Right. Um, but uh, one thing I want to point out because the other knife I have on the table is one that surprised me how much I liked it, and that's the uh, the free. So this is the P2, this is that uh, single hand, you guys kind of saw I split that there open. This is the, the single handed use knife from Leatherman. Um, and it's meant to be like everything one handed, right? So you can get to every tool on the knife with just one hand. And uh, you know, this is the P2, it's the lighter version. It comes with a nice deep carry pocket clip. When I was carrying this and testing it, I carried it uh, in my pocket, it was amazing. To be honest, when I first saw these, I was like, I don't think so, right? Because I'm just so used to my surge. I was like, I don't think so. And after using it so much, my only real complaint with this, and I have to find it really quick. My only real complaint is that the uh, screwdriver, that the bit is not a replaceable bit, right? Right. So you have a right. fixed bit, but like on my surge, I have, I have, I can replace the bit on it, right? Right. And that's honestly my only complaint. And to, and to be honest, like when I had this in my pocket, I like helped my little brother re rewire half of his house. I was working on cars. I was doing all sorts of stuff. And that little like, like trade off, I was like, eh, it's worth it because this thing was just so handy. <laughs> like I just, it was so dang handy. Like not having it in, in my leather sheath and pulling it out and two handing it, right? Like it was right. so nice. Yeah, so nice. So I don't have one of the Leatherman free series. But yeah. just at work playing with them, it takes a little bit to get used to the one hand. But then once mm -hmm. you like learn the tool and you know how to function, it's like, whoa, I can actually, I can hold whatever I'm doing over here. Yeah. And then I have my, my tool to get it out with my one hand. It, it, you get used to it. Yeah, that's exactly where it just shone through, like working overhead on like light fixtures and stuff. It was right. so nice to be able to hold stuff get my screwdriver out, right? And like work on it. So, um, right. and those are just two small offerings from all the amazing stuff that Leatherman offers. Um, the cool thing about Leatherman is they're actually on sale right now. Um, Leatherman like never goes on sale, but you can get that surge for 114 bucks and you can get the Leatherman free for 105 bucks right now on the website. So it's actually a pretty sweet deal oh, that's um, a way for good already deal, great knives. Like you get a little discount too, you know? For sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and then the other cool thing with Leatherman is they have a 25 year warranty. So basically lifetime warranty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything goes wrong with your knife, they're gonna set you up. Um, so yeah, so really great, just made in the USA bootstrap story. I, I love it, honestly. And then their warranty is really great. I've sent in tools before to have it be repaired and they're quick to get them back to you too. So it's cool. Cool. Um, I've got some, I've got a Kershaw right here. Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about the launch 11? Oh my gosh. You know, I want to talk about the launch 11. <laughs> oh man. I'm telling you right now, I haven't had one Kershaw in the last like handful of months to say, oh my gosh, this thing is sick. But this little launch 11 is seriously Probably it's my favorite launch series. Oh yeah, knife ha hands down. The launch eleven is my favorite launch knife. I mean, the launch four. You know, I like the launch four. I know you're not as big of a right. fan. I like the launch four, but that launch eleven knocks the launch four out of the water for how obviously they're very different size knife. But just me liking it or not liking it, launch eleven all day. Right. Honestly, it's it fits good in the hand. It's good ergonomics. It's snappy, but it's not. Oh my gosh, this knife's gonna fly out of my hand. And 
stab someone. It, it's honestly, it's a perfect knife. It almost yeah. is a perfect knife. I was gonna say, man, I don't know if there's any perfect knives, but the Launch 11 comes dang close. <laughs> look look at the pocket clip. Needs to be deep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Got, they gotta jump on that deep pocket clip train. I gotta tell so. you though, it hasn't, the one that I've been carrying hasn't bothered me at all. Like, Oh really? I, yeah, I haven't even noticed, but uh, cause I just, yeah, I think it's just cause I love it so much. <laughs> right. No, I totally get that. And these things are sweet for a hundred bucks, man. Yeah. hundred bucks, you can have a launch 11. Well, and when we're Kershaw. talking American made, right? Like these Kershaw just does such a good job with their, with their warranty, obviously made in the USA. And to right. be able to get a budget auto that's of such good quality for that like hundred to under hundred dollar, just over hundred dollar price range right. is awesome. I, I totally agree. And talking about Kershaw, we can transition straight into a ZT knife. So this is the 0456. Now, I don't know about you, but that thing is a beauté. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I I honestly, I, I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but that uh, the anodized collar pivot is mm -hmm. freaking rad. There's like three different colors in it. It's so cool. But I like this knife. I have a hard time with ZTs because they're either too big and too far out there or they're too dainty. Like the 0450, I love that knife, but a little too slim for me. Yeah. But this thing, dude, this thing's a beast. Honestly, such a cool knife. Um, you get 20 CV steel, uh, titanium handle, you got your reversible pocket clip, and you got your blue backspacer. Oh, that's not even, Kurt, that's not even in focus, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> okay. It's a great knife, but because it's ZT and it has those uh, high-end materials, it is going to cost you, it's around 260 on the website. But if we're talking Kershaw and ZT, I mean... Kershaw's excellence and ZT is like the next step up. And honestly, these things, they call them zero tolerance for a reason because they are always spot on, straight out of the box. Oh, I completely agree. And there was actually, um, you know, so obviously ZT is an American company. That's the topic we're on. But right. uh, they actually formed that company in response to helping first responders and creating tools for first responders and stuff after 9-11. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we actually have a really rad interview we did with Ken Onion. It hasn't gotten a lot of views, which eh, it is what it is. But I actually think it's one of the best interviews and not because I'm in it at all. I think it's just one of the best interviews we've ever done because Ken had so many good stories. And he talks about ZT Knives and kind of the, how it formed and why it formed. So if you right. guys want to know more about ZT, uh, go check out that Ken Onion interview. I think it was last year at Blade Show, if I remember right. Um, but it was a great sit down. And... Yeah, I mean, ZT, yeah, just incredible warranty, well overbuilt knives. And even though they come out with stuff from time to time where like the hardcore ZT fans are like, nope, not a ZT, I'm not buying it. Like right. they make a good knife regardless of what size or what materials it is. Absolutely. I totally yeah. agree. Uh, now, speaking of materials <laughs> and nice knives, <laughs> uh, next up, I've got ProTech on the table. So I grabbed, nice. uh, this is actually my ProTech SBR. Uh, that I got from Dave at SHOT Show. Uh, he put a, a, a nice little inlay pearl button in it for me and he put my name on it, which was really kind of him. Um, but I love this SBR and this is a great example of just Protex craftsmanship in general, right? So yeah. um, just really solid construction, super snappy action. It's got the this nice deep carry pocket clip with the recessed screws. So just really smooth in and out of pocket. And to be honest, this was the first ProTech, the SBR, not the specific one, but the SBR was the first ProTech that like really spoke to me. Because uh, yeah. a lot of the like the tactical response series, great knives, incredible knives, but kind of like how you feel with the ZT-0450. Yeah. It like those tactical response knives, the, the tips feel like I'm gonna break them. Um, and I probably wouldn't, but I'm worried about it, right? But this SBR right. is like this stubby little like, doesn't matter how dumb I am, right? Like it, it should be tough. <laughs> I I really like my favorite ProTech. Maybe it's not my favorite, but one I would like 
is the Newport in rose gold. With oh, the yeah. rose gold blade. I don't know why. I just want to like take that and take it out to dinner or fancy restaurant. <laughs> I mean, I guess my wife can come too, for sure. But right, yeah, of course, of yeah, course. Yeah, I want to <laughs> take that thing out. Nice. Dude, my, so my buddy, my buddy Nick, he, he just got a Protec Dawn in rose gold for yes. his wife because that's what she wants in her purse. It's like, yes. I don't, I don't have one on the table, but the Protec Dawn is like opened. It's like that big. It's like a huge knife in it is rose a huge gold dagger. Yeah, and she just is, she's just keeping it in her, in her purse. Great purse knife, I guess. Hey, <laughs> you never know when you might need a Protec. Exactly. You know, and <laughs> when we talk, when we talk American made, you know, Dave over at Protec, you know, they're based there out of Southern California. Incredible guy. Incredible attention to detail. Um, right. And you know, his dad ran a knife store for years and years and years and years. And that's where Dave grew up, right? He grew up in this knife right. store and he, and he, and he kind of got this idea like, well, I mean, yeah, I, I could probably make knives. And so he, that's what he did. He started making knives and he makes some of, whether it's American made, whether it's anything else made, he makes some of the best knives, right? Just some of the best automatic knives, especially in this price oh, range, yeah. just anywhere. Um, and that, that SBR you can get for in the $180 range on the website. And then the other thing that I love about ProTech is they're always having fun with materials and they're always having fun with mechanisms. So this oh, is the ProTech Magic knife. Whiskers. And uh, the way that you open this is the bolster actually slides. So it's an automatic knife with kind of a hidden release, uh, which is so cool. Um, and then, you know, it's just a nice, simple, beautiful design. And you can get these whiskers when they're in stock for like, 200, 210 bucks on the website. Now, these do come and go pretty quick. We have a couple in stock as of this video, but I don't know how long they'll last. <laughs> right. But dude, uh, those, those things are fun, man. Dude, it's always, so it's much a, fun. It's always fun handing that off to a, a friend or whoever and, mm -hmm. and watching them try to figure out and then you just flick it open and they're like, what, how? Yep. Yeah, we actually did that just today with, uh, or just a few days ago with our social media, our new social media gal, she, Emmeline. Uh, I was like, hey, go grab that whiskers. And she brought it over and she's like, wait, how does this open? And she played at it for a while. And, <laughs> and then we finally showed her, this is how it opens. She's like, right. oh, it's so cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so ProTech, uh, American made, incredible warranty, incredible knives, great people. And the other thing that I love about ProTech knives and uh, you know some of these other companies that we've talked about, they do collaborations with people all over the world, right? Um, like I've got right. some Spyderco's on the table we'll get to. Spyderco collaborates with different manufacturers all over the world, with different designers all over the world. Um, and Dave does the same, right? Dave makes right. Uh, some autos for uh, Boker. He makes autos for other people. He brings in different designers. And that's something that I think whether it's on the table or just in the knife industry in general is something that's so wonderful and also uniquely American is taking all these awesome elements from all over and then making the best product, right? Like, right. and I love uh, that. I love I, that about. I totally agree. Uh, yeah. Dude, Protex, when we were talking about how Dave takes a lot of pride in what he does and, you know, uh, his customs, when they hand engrave those, I'm not kidding. That's a piece of art. That's not even mm -hmm. a knife at that point. That thing's just a piece of art. There's only been two high-end knives that have ever really tempted me. The gold class bug out. And I know, you know, bug out, whatever. I don't care. I freaking love it. It's amazing. With the, what did you call it? The chicken wire inlay. Chick chicken <laughs> wire inlay. <laughs> Benchmade gold class has really tempted me. And then uh, Dave, I think it was the last shot show. Dave had a couple of those magic whiskers customs. And yes. oh, dude, I was I was very tempted to drop way more money than I had on one of those, and I'm still I still got the itch. But yeah, beautiful right. knives. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, let's see. I've got some Microtechs over here. Should we talk about those? Oh yeah. I've got the Microtech Exoset. Now this thing is a cutie. <laughs> honestly such a, it's such a cutie <laughs> it's just a cutie it really honestly is well yeah so we're not lawyers but the, the 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 word on the street is is that it's california legal so um yeah it has to be it has to be right at that sub two inch two inch yeah that's the story but uh this thing is sweet 250 bucks it's a microtech you know you can't go wrong made in america and honestly these things i wonder if they've done torture tests, see how many times they can fire one open. It'd be cool to have the numbers on that. 
It would maybe, be cool. Maybe Jamie could whip up something or just fake yeah. it. I don't. I have no clue. I don't. <laughs> he, he he works his magic, right? That's that's his <laughs> right. thing. Right. <laughs> right. But this Exo set is actually really cool. They come in a lot of different colors. Um, it also doubles as a money clip. I personally am not a money clip guy, but yeah, I could throw a couple bucks in there, you know. It's cool. And yeah. the other the other thing I really like about the Exoset is it fits so fat and slim in your pocket that you you don't feel it once it's in there. So And that's what I was gonna say is if you don't use the clip as a money clip and if it turns you off as a pocket clip, it still works really well as an in pocket knife because it's so slim and small. Right. Yeah, no, this is a great knife, and for 250 bucks with CTS 24 204P steel, it's sweet. And you get all the custom Microtech details. Like, there's a lot of detail in this knife. It's a cool one. I like it. But I have a Dirac dagger that I like even more. It's just so pretty. Honestly, every time I pick up a Microtech, I think of my uh, my Guardian Tactical, right? Because another American-made company, OTF. But yeah. I got to be honest, I'm kind of kind of leaning towards some Microtechs. I might have to pick one up, actually. Dude, and that, that D-Rack, it's interesting, the two that you chose, because that D-Rack is, I mean, these are both kind of like the smaller knives, right? I think when you get into the UTX-70 size, for me, the UTX-70 is it's too small. It's it's almost like a toy, right? Like it's not right. a toy in its materials. It's not a toy in how well it's built, but it feels kind of like a toy because it's so small. And that D-Rack is, man, it's about the perfect size for an OTF. Honestly, it really is. Uh, I agree. I think the 70s are too tiny and I don't probably wouldn't spend the money on a tiny toy, even though it's totally a knife, like I get it, but that's just not my thing. But this is a nice size. A nice size. I also like the eighty fives. Mm -hmm. They're they're a good size. But with the Dirac, you get this dagger blade. It's a two point eight inch blade, so it's right in that sweet spot that I love, right around three inches, and it's awesome. I mean, these things are very strong i was gonna say bulletproof these things are both no nah, these are very strong especially yeah. for all the technology <laughs> and all the moving parts and functions it's they're incredible they really are and the deer rack you can get for 270 on the site yeah and that's something with microtech right so they they i mean they really pioneered a lot of that production otf world right and we sat right. down with tony marfione a while ago and we're hoping to be able to get to microtech and do a shop tour one of these days. <laughs> right. Um, but we sat down with Tony and we got like a ton of awesome stories. And he was talking about like the first knife deal he ever got was literally on a napkin. And he has the napkin still. Like he has <laughs> his first knife order, this first napkin knife order. And so um, that's awesome. Yeah. It, it's always cool to sit down with these dudes and and get their stories and like hear hear how they kind of got from where they were to where they are. Right. Right. And, uh, and Microtech's definitely like they've they've definitely been on that curve where now it's like when you talk about OTFs, you can't talk about an OTF without talking about Microtech and specifically like the Ultratech, oh, right? The Ultratech absolutely. is, it's the yardstick, right? It really is. Honestly, they, they've set the bar so high that everybody's trying to meet that standard. So yep, exactly. It's, um, it's just something that they really hit the nail on the head, you know? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, they've, they've definitely taken the time to make it right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so the next uh, American-made company that I have up, and this is, I mentioned before, this is, uh, I have some of their knives that are made in the United States. They also make knives in other places in the world, and that's Spyderco. So um, I grabbed a uh, pair of three. This is actually a pair of three in Maximit. We have some of these. So if you guys have been looking for a pair of three with a crazy awesome steel, grab yourself one of these bad boys. Um, but yeah, so four reversible pocket that. clip, compression lock, right, exactly. Uh, you guys know the story on the pair of three, um, but you know, again, going back to you know this this idea of innovation, this idea of uh, doing things uniquely, kind of uniquely American, right? Spyderco is one of those companies right. that I always think about. Uh, I mean, they're attributed with being the first production company to put a pocket clip on a knife. Like that's, I mean, it, it just seems that's like such crazy. a oh yeah, of course, right? But like 
there's a reason that all of our grandpas either carried their knives in their sheaths or in their pockets because right. nobody had pocket clips, right? Like, <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, then they have knives like the pair of three, which are just great EDC utility knives. And then this is something that I love about Spyderco is they are not scared to make a very, very purpose-built and really at the end of the day, what is visually weird knives, right? that are built for very specific tasks. Um, so this is the Spyderco Yojimbo. And you know, this was this is a Michael Janich design. This is a primarily designed as a self-defense knife. Um, obviously with that Warncliffe blade, this is also a great utility blade. Um, but you know, they have knives like the Salt Series in H1, right? Like right. all those Salt Series knives, those are those are specifically designed for being in and around water. Right? Oh, and ab absolutely. I just I just love this process that they take of like, okay, cool. Here's a specific niche that we're looking at. Let's make a knife for it. Um, and they're not right. scared to make, like I said, weird. Like really that's what it is. If you're not a knife guy and you see some of these Spyderco designs, you're like, dude, that's a weird knife. <laughs> right. Uh, another weird one that's coming to my mind is the Rhino or it's not oh, yeah. called the Rhino, but it's it's like a little Rhino and the name has something to do with a Rhino. Yeah. All, all I know is, yeah, they are... If it's bold and out there, they do not care. They're like, let's ride this train. It's cool. Yeah, and again, that innovation, right? Like not not right. scared to innovate, not scared to push the boundaries. They're always playing with new steels. Um, they just released their new launch. Like they have all their new knives. And there's a couple in there that are that just that strange, beautiful spider co designs, right? Well, I I think there's a new one with that's supposed to look like a dog. Yeah, the is that the, right? I don't know if it's the Pocky, the Pochi. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it looks like a little dog, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there you go. <laughs> yep. There, There's innovation for you right there. Let's just try it, you know, see what exactly. sticks. S see what sticks. Um, so that Maximate Para 3, obviously it's Maximate. It's a sprint run. There's a lot going for it. So that one goes for 206. Para 3s uh, generally go for a little less than that. And then that Yojimbo 2 or the Yojimbo goes for 150, more or less, on the website. Um, but yeah, you know, started by Sal Glesser, um, Sal's son, Eric Glesser now is kind of the, you know, the, the, they, they kind of run things in tandem and that's who we right. always sit down with at SHOT Show. And if you guys haven't watched any of our SHOT Show or Blade Show shit, sit downs with, um, Eric, you guys got to check him out because that dude knows his knives inside and out. And not only that, but like how particular Spyderco is about how they do their edges, how they... Uh, do their manufacturing, how like how they do their grinds. Like they're just so detailed. There's so many little right. things that go into a Spyderco knife that if you don't if you don't hear the story, you wouldn't know until you used it. You know, looking at the oh, knife, yeah. you may not understand right. it, right? Yeah. They they really are cool. They they pay attention to those little details. And I think that's what set them apart, you know? Yep. Spyderco is a huge brand because they've done the work to get there. Yep. You know what I mean? Exactly. So well, I have a couple Benchmades over here. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's okay. the question. Do you have, do you have any, do you have Benchmades? Or uh, sorry, do you have bug outs? No, I don't. Okay, okay. Dude, let's do this then. What do you got? <laughs> I, first, first one up, Benchmade proper. Oh, I think I just got a fingerprint on it. Let's try that. <laughs> the Benchmade proper, AKA my Eleanor. There's Eleanor. This is my unicorn, guys. I That knife has put more than one type of those bandages on your finger before. <laughs> yes, it really has. But it is the best, maybe not the best. In my opinion, I love this slip joint. The micarta that they put on it is the perfect amount of like smooth, but it's still tacky. Like you can still feel that texture. I uh, love the clip point. It's got a great half stop. I personally, on the one I have, it's out in my truck, but I have a leather lanyard with a brass bead and I love it. I think it's a really cool knife. I don't know what it is with me and these knives, but even earlier when uh, I was setting up in here, I opened this knife and opening it, I poked my hand <laughs> and I was like, oh, not again. <laughs> But luckily, it was just a poke, no big deal, not not even any blood. So nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. This knife, man, it's out to get me. But you got to get back on that horse. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. You get 
S30V steel, slip joint, amazing micarta for $130 on the, well, $127 on the website. Yeah, it's a it's a great modern traditional. And speaking of modern traditionals, you know, they're getting ready to release that, uh, what's it, the Tengu Flipper from Tengu. Ozer? Dude, yes. that is going to be a spicy knife. I'm really excited oh, yeah. for that knife to drop. Yeah, I've I've been waiting for that. I actually just saw it in the coming soon on the mm -hmm. site just uh, yesterday or something like that. And I was like, oh man, I've been waiting for this. I'm so excited. Okay, I've got another one. This is the last one, dude. And it is the Benchmade Super Freak. It's Super Freaky. <laughs> no, okay, this is the Benchmade Freak. And we call it the Super Freak because it's all bedazzled and just gorgeous. I mean, M4 steel with an axis lock. And look how this thing fits in the hams. Let's see. Yeah, man, the that freak is it's it's a big work knife that has a little bit of like flair to it, right? Yep, absolutely. I mean, M4 steel. Uh, you got your G10 scales. Um, I mean, what else do you want besides a deep carry clip? You know, get a deep yep. carry clip on that, and it's amazing. I have one of these. It is a workhorse. Anytime I put my bug outs down and I have like a bigger job or if I know I'm gonna use my knife, I'm like, give me that M4. <laughs> let's, give me, that, give me that M4, let's go to work, you know? Yeah. So I really like the Freak. I think it's a good design. For me, it is a big knife, but it does fit nice in the old ham sharks. Ham sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? Honestly, for Benchmade, American made, their life sharp warranty, I mean, they take care of their customers and 190 bucks for an M4, like this this knife is gonna last you a very long time. Yeah, and that's a big thing with Benchmade. You know, again, they're based up there in the Portland area. And uh yeah, just just an incredible company, incredible American-made designs. I mean, they pioneered the Axis Lock, right? They made that a thing for the industry. Like I mentioned with the Hogue, like because of Benchmade, now we get these other awesome knives with this incredible lock that we all love. Um, yeah, we owe a lot to Benchmade. And I think that that's indicative of a lot of the knives on the table. There's just a ton of innovation between all these companies, right? Um, right. And there's so many other American-made brands that obviously we couldn't fit you know, just because of time and on right. the table and whatnots. So guys, uh, you guys watching, let us know down in the comments, uh, what are some of your favorite American-made brands? And, uh, you know, let's get them all a shout out and let's let's just make an awesome list down in the comments for people to come and check out, you know, where they can grab some sweet American-made knives from different cool companies. Um, so Kurt, out of everything on the table, your table or my table, what, uh, who are you going with? And it doesn't have to be the knife, but company-wise, what are you, who, who are you going with company-wise? <sighs> Dude, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you know I'm a Benchmade guy. <laughs> Dude, I'm a and that's fine. Benchmade guy. That's fine. We all have our favorites. There's nothing to be ashamed of there. You know, you know what? <laughs> for for what it's worth, when I was interviewed by Ben forever ago, when I was interviewed for the job, they said, if you could take photos for one company, what would it be? And I was like, Benchmade. They're just my favorite knives. I don't know why. They, they some of them are really great heavy hitters and some of them eh, I'm not really into, but Benchmade, I'm a Benchmade guy. What about you? Well, I remember you? Just, a, just a little while ago, you had a, a bucket full of Benchmade hunt knives. Cause if you guys don't know, we have a huge sale on a bunch of hunt knives. Go check out the website. Yes. But uh, Kurt walks in with this huge bucket and he's just grinning ear to ear. And he's like, nothing more beautiful than a bucket full of Benchmades. <laughs> 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 Dude, on, honestly, I I thoroughly enjoy taking photos of Benchmades. And there's, there's maybe one or two, and I'm like, eh, not my jam. But uh, most of the time, I'm like, yes. And hey, yeah. I actually picked up one of those discontinued Hunt Series knives. Having a little bit of customization happening to Dude, it we're, right now. We're going to have to see it soon. I'm stoked. <laughs> oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> right on. Um, for me, I, you actually have the brand. I think I would choose tops, man, tops knives. They have just, they've been creating some stuff the last couple of years that have just speak to my soul, like on a, on a, like a practical use level. 
oh, and yeah. then also just like on the level of a company just out having a good time and making what they want to make. Um, you know, they had that little mini slingshot at the last shot show. Yeah. I was absolutely in love with that. Uh, you know, the the Kumakage or whatever, that sword knife, that one's going to be coming very soon. We should have them at Blade HQ any day now. Um, and and that, like that's kind of the fun side. And then on the practical side, it's like every single trade show, they're coming out with three or four fixed blades that I'm just like, man, I need oh, to just yeah. carry fixed blades every day to justify buying all these knives that I'm stoked on from Topps Knives, right? Um, obviously, right. I love Hogue. Obviously, I love ProTech. You know, every single company on the table I love. But right now, I've just got a special place in my heart for Topps Knives. Honestly, they are coming out with some of the coolest stuff, especially if you're a fixed blade guy. I am yeah. a fixed blade guy. I will probably end up picking up this mini Scandi just because how well it fits in the hams. That's a three finger knife for the hams. But, ooh, they're so nice. It's good stuff, man. All right, sweet. Well, uh, dude, I'm so stoked that we were able to finally figure out how to get you a good camera and get me a good camera and, and get everything going. Uh, so it was fun sitting down. Hopefully we'll be sitting down together uh, in real life soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, and we I'm hope excited. everybody out there is doing well and we hope you guys are all staying safe and uh, let us know down in the comments. Again, what your favorite American made knife companies are, some of your favorite American made knives. We'll catch you on the next one. Welcome to the end screen, everyone. Hey, make sure you subscribe to Blade HQ right over there. Also, check out the website down below. There's some awesome knife content. We'll see you on the next one.